Okay, so for example number two, we have an object is launched at a velocity of 20 meters per second in a direction making an angle with 25 degrees upward with the horizontal. A, what is the maximum height reached by the object? B, what is the total flight time between launch and touching the ground of the object? C, what is the horizontal range of the object? And D, what is the magnitude of the velocity of the object just before it hits the ground? So we have um, this object launched at a velocity of 20 meters per second in a direction making an angle with 25 degrees upward with the horizontal. What that means is, this thing is being launched like this on the ground. It's going to go like that. This is our 25 degrees, and then this is our 20 meters per second. Um, now for A, we wanna know the maximum height. So maximum height will be equal to the delta Y at the highest point, so this point right here. Our total flight time, so that'll be time total, Horizontal range is delta x, and then the magnitude of velocity of the object just before it reaches the ground, that will be our v final. And notice how I didn't put a subscript here, okay? It's just v final. Um, we need both the final velocity in the y direction and the final velocity in the x direction in order to find that final velocity. So, First and foremost, whenever you're given a velocity that's at an angle, we need to break that initial velocity down into the x and y components. So if I draw a picture of this, I have that initial velocity, and that's just initial velocity, right? It's at an angle, so we have to break that down. I'm going to put vx and v initial y. Now the reason that I put vx and not the initial x is because remember, in the x direction, the horizontal direction, our velocity is constant because there's no acceleration. So because of that, it's just vx. It's gonna be constant the entire time. Now the initial velocity is at 20 meters per second. So if I use the sine of this angle, sine of the angle is equal to opposite v initial y over hypotenuse, which is v initial. So that tells me that my v initial y will just be v initial times the sine of the angle. All right, same thing with Vx, but using cosine. All right, so plugging in uh, Vx will be V initial times the cosine of the angle. Skipped a step there because I showed you the step with the sine. All right, plugging in numbers here, we get V initial Y is equal to V initial, which was 20 meters per second, times the sine of the angle, which is 25 degrees. Um, Vx will be 20 times a cosine of 25 degrees. Now, um, when you're doing these problems, make sure that your calculator is in degree mode. Uh, I think it's fine right now, but once you guys get um, to a point in calculus where you're usually you're using radians a lot, um, you'll have to remember to switch back and forth, okay? The initial y ends up being 8.45 meters per second. And then our Vx ends up being 18.13 meters per second. Okay, so now that we have that, we know that um, for part A, we want to know what the maximum height is that that thing reaches. Now, the special part about the maximum height, which is this point right here, is that our final velocity at that point in the y direction is equal to zero because we only have a velocity in the x direction there. Just like when we're throwing something directly into the air, if that's just the vertical direction, right, the um, y direction, at the very top, that velocity is zero. But here, we not only have vertical motion, we always ha also have horizontal motion. So the vertical motion is still zero at the top there, but the horizontal motion, we're still moving in the horizontal direction. So our x component of velocity is not zero. So at the top, uh, v final, I'll just say vy equals zero.
So because of that, I can now write down givens. I have the initial y is equal to that 8.45 meters per second. We just found that. My v final y is zero meters per second because we're at the very top. I know acceleration in the y direction is just the acceleration of gravity. Now I said that up was positive with that positive v initial y. So that means that my acceleration has to be a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And then I know that I want to find the height. So really what I'm looking for here is my delta y. All right, so the equation that I want to use that has final velocity in the y direction, initial velocity in the y direction, acceleration and displacement in the y direction is that final velocity squared equals initial velocity squared plus two times a times delta y. Plugging in my numbers, I get final velocity in the y direction is zero equals initial velocity 8.45 meters per second squared plus two, I'm running out of room, times negative 9.8 times delta y. All right. Notice how not only did I not solve this equation algebraically for my uh, intended variable, but I also dropped my units on the acceleration. Do as I say, not as I do, okay? Um, so we have 8.45 is that squared, so we get is 71.4 plus 2 times 9.8. This ends up being minus because that acceleration is negative, so we get minus 19.6 delta y. I'm going to add 19.6 delta y to both sides. and then divide both sides by that 19.6. So 71.4 divided by 19.6, we end up getting a delta y of 3.64 meters. So that is our maximum height. It's not very high because 25 degrees is not a very big angle. <clears throat> All right, so that is our uh, maximum height. And then for part B, it says, what is the total flight time before between launch and touching the ground of the object? Now, there's two ways to do this. Um, you can either get the time up to that maximum height, because you know at that maximum height, you know how the delta y, you know the final velocity in the y direction, you know the initial velocity in the y direction, you know, you know your acceleration, so it's pretty easy to get that time. If you do get that time, you have to then multiply it by two, because it takes half the time to get up there and then half the time to come back down. All right, so if you want to get the time up to the maximum height, don't forget to multiply by two. Another way you can do this is I can say, okay, my initial y position is zero because we're at the ground, and then my final y position for that total flight is also zero because that thing lands on the ground also. So here, delta y is just zero minus zero, which is zero. So I'm actually going to do it that way. So for part b, my delta y for that entire flight is zero. I also know that my initial velocity in the y direction is at 8.45 meters per second, and then the acceleration is the negative 9.8 meters per second squared. And we're trying to find time. So the only equation that has our delta y, initial velocity in the y direction, acceleration, and time is the second basic equation. So we get delta y is equal to the initial y times time plus one half acceleration times time squared. Plugging in numbers, I get zero is equal to initial velocity, which is 8.45 times time, because I'm trying to find time, plus one half times a negative 9.8 times time squared. So here I end up getting 8.45t minus 4.9t squared, and then adding 4.9t squared to both sides, I can now cancel out this time with one of those right there, and then I can also divide both sides by 4.9. And so I can get my answer, t is equal to 8.45 divided by 4.9, and we get 1.72 seconds. <clears throat>
All right. I like that way just because um, I don't have to multiply by two at the end. You guys know, I've told you this before, I'm very forgetful. So sometimes I'll get an answer and I'll forget to multiply by two like I intended to do at the end. So that's why I like that way. But you can do either way. Either way works. Okay. Um, now, remember, you can only do it this way if you start and end at the same place. If you don't start and end at the same height, you can't plug in zero for your delta y. Okay, so that was part B. Now part C says, what is the horizontal range or the maximum X above the ground of the object? So here we're looking for delta X, right, our range. Now we have the velocity in the X direction we found to be 18.13 meters per second. We also just found our time, which is gonna be very helpful as well. So for part C, we know that the only equation that we use in the X direction is our VX is equal to range delta X over time. Because remember, there's no acceleration in the x direction, so we have to use the constant velocity equation because we have a constant velocity. Now we're looking for range. So I have delta x is equal to velocity in the x direction times time. We know both of those things because we know that the velocity in the x direction is what we found before to be 18.13 meters per second. And then we just found total time to be 1.72 seconds. So now plugging those numbers in, we get our range is equal to 18.13 meters per second. Time is 1.72 seconds. And so we end up getting that range is equal to 1.72 times 31.18 meters. All right, so that's our range. Um, and then last but not least, we want to know D, what is the magnitude of the velocity of the object just before it hits the ground? Now, we actually don't really need a calculation for this because remember, this motion is like a mirror image. So because of that, this velocity as it hits the ground right here will also be 20 meters per second. Now, the reason it's 20 meters per second is because remember, the velocity in the x direction stays constant, and then the velocity in the y direction changes, but it changes at the same rate the entire time. So remember, our acceleration of gravity is always 9.8 meters per second squared pointed toward the ground. So because it's acting um, to slow that object down as it goes up and then speed that object up as it goes down, that was a very confusing sentence, at the same rate, you're going to have the same y component of velocity as you come down to that same height you started at. But I can prove it also, okay? So let's prove it. So for part D, <clears throat> I know that the velocity in the x direction is going to be constant. That's 18.13 meters per second. So I need to find my final velocity in the y direction in order to find that velocity final period. All right, because I'm I'm asking for the final velocity, which is going to be the hypotenuse when um, or the resultant vector when we have an x component and a y component final. So final velocity in the y direction. I know that the initial velocity in the y direction is equal to 8.45 meters per second. I know the acceleration in the y direction is a negative 9.8 meters per second squared. I know that my total time of the flight was that 1.72 seconds. All right, so because of all this information, I can use the first basic equation to solve for final velocity. So in the y direction, I mean. So we get final velocity in the y direction is equal to initial velocity in the y direction plus acceleration times time. Plugging in my numbers, I get 8.45 plus negative 9.8 times 1.72. Running out of room. So we get 8.45 minus the quantity 9.8 times 1.72. And we get a final velocity of negative 8.4. And I got 06, which really is 8.41. And this is, of course, due to some rounding errors. Um, you see how this is almost, almost equal to just the opposite um, vector of the initial velocity, okay? Um, so really I should get the same number as I have for the initial velocity, at the same magnitude of the initial velocity, but it's a little different because of rounding. 
um, meters per second. And then because this is negative, that just means that it's down, all right? And then I also have the positive x component. So this is a 8.41. This is, uh, what was it again? 18.13. And then in order to find that final velocity, we just put that into Pythagorean theorem. So B final equals a square root of 8.41 squared plus 18.13 squared. And we get plus 19.98. So about 20. meters per second. Okay. So again, this is like a mirror image. So you don't actually have to do this calculation for part D. You can just know because it's starting and ending at the same height, you are going to have the same final velocity, but that direction is just going to be different because it's coming down in the final case rather than going up.